I bought a broken Xbox One X Taco Bell limited edition. I paid $163.53 along with $64 in shipping. The seller says I was playing it one day and it just stopped working. It turns on, makes the Taco Bell sound, and then shuts off after seven seconds. This video is sponsored by iFixit. More on them in a minute. Let's see what it does when we try to turn it on. Let's hear that Taco Bell sound. There we go, that's awesome. Okay, so it does have power. Okay, there we got some, uh... okay, that sounds like an overheating issue to me. The fan ramps up right away really fast. Okay, and it does shut down. That definitely seemed like more than seven seconds to me. Maybe all we need on this one is the perfect amount of thermal paste. Let's get it taken apart and check it out. Now, just looking at the back of this here, I can already see several things. It's definitely been opened before, and then it was definitely not put back together correctly. You can see how this kind of like bows down right here. So it's also missing one screw here and this screw right here. So we should be able to remove this cover right away. And we can. A bunch of screws missing. Screws in the wrong place over here. Screw missing over here. So we got all sorts of stuff going on on this one. Those are the wrong screws for that. So we'll need to add a bunch of screws, but I'm getting a little bit worried about what we might find when we get this all the way opened up. But next, I'm gonna grab my iFixit Protect Toolkit. The Protect Toolkit has pretty much everything you need to open most devices. It's got all of these uh, pry tools and tweezers. And then over here, we've got a suction cup and more pry tools. And then my favorite feature of the set, we have the driver kit. This has most of the bits you would need to open up most devices. So this is my go-to kit when I'm open up any of these devices. If you need to buy yourself a kit of some of the most high quality precision tools, I recommend iFixit. You can go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix. I'll have a link right in the description that'll take you there. And thank you again to iFixit for sponsoring this video. So now I'm just gonna get all of these screws out and we'll take a look at the inside. These uh, metal mesh pieces right here are just totally jammed up in this top cover. They get caught on here if you're not careful. Not too big of a deal, we can straighten those out. And we got a dirty fan. It's not necessarily a big deal. Kind of expected that. So it looks like we have all the parts. That's good news. Got the hard drive right here, the disk drive right here, the power supply here, and the fan right here. So I'm gonna take all of these off so we can get down to the motherboard and have a better look at the motherboard itself. We've got excess thermal paste all up here. This is not too big of a deal because it's viscous thermal paste, so we can actually just kind of scoop it up and put it back on those chips where it's supposed to be on, but just shows kind of how somebody wasn't really paying attention when they put it on. And here's the bottom side of the board. Nothing too crazy over here. This right here is the custom speaker. Now I'm assuming that the custom chime is kind of built into this speaker, but it is possible that there's something that, that sends the correct signal here. But I think this chime would work assuming you have the right circuitry on any Xbox One X. I could be wrong on that though. And with the X clamp off, we can flip it over and remove the heat sink and see what it looks like under here. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. There's absolutely zero thermal paste. Ah, uh, and they really scratched this up. Look at this. That is definitely not the way to remove thermal paste. Theoretically, putting new thermal paste on this would be fine because the thermal paste will fill in all those little gouges and grooves. But either way, this is just definitely not the way to remove it. You don't need to scrape it up or scratch it up with a screwdriver. All you have to do is use like a cotton bud Q-tip, just go through and remove it like that. But did they use a screwdriver on the chip itself? It doesn't look like it. That is nice and smooth still. I don't see any damage on any of these little chips around the die here, so I think we're good there. So most likely one of two things is going on here, or possibly both. The first thing that comes to mind is the re-driver chip on this board. The second thing that comes to mind is the hard drive. If the hard drive goes bad on the Xbox One X or even the Xbox One, it can actually cause a no signal issue. 
and it can actually cause it to turn off like it turned off. But before we get to any of that diagnosis, I'm gonna put new thermal paste in this and then put it back together enough to plug it back in and test because it was just overheating and shutting down. With new thermal paste, it will at least let it stay cool enough to stay on longer and see if anything comes up on the screen. Now I'm not gonna worry about getting this super clean just because we just needed to stay cool enough to test it. So this doesn't have to be perfect by any means. But the amount of thermal paste I put on will definitely be the perfect amount. And there we go. All right, and with the perfect amount of thermal paste installed, let's get it back together and see if it'll stay on longer. Okay, back together enough to test. Let's see what happens. Power, good. And nothing after that. And this time the fan isn't even spinning. It's just doing nothing. It does have power because the bell is going, but it just refuses to start up. Okay, we get a white light. I unplugged the HDMI cable and then plugged it back in and then we got a white light. I don't know if that points to possibly a redriver, but that kind of makes me wonder and then it just powered off. And so far the fan isn't starting at all. I just keep starting it up over and over and letting it power off just to see if anything will happen and if it'll stay on. And so far it is not. And it's still doing the exact same thing. So what I'm going to do is remove this top cover and then I'm gonna unplug the hard drive. Then I'm gonna try and power it on again and see if we get the same symptoms. So what I'm looking for here is to see if it does the exact same thing. If it does the exact same thing, it's probably not a hard drive issue. It definitely still could be, but probably not. We get just the bell and nothing else. And here is the original. I like to mark them so I can tell which one is the original, especially when I'm putting the exact same hard drive in, the same model. And now we'll get this back into the console. And with a known good hard drive, we get the exact same thing. And we just get the bell, no lights, no fan, no nothing. So what I'm gonna do next is test that redriver and see if we get voltage there and see if it looks like maybe need, we need to replace it. So we've got power plugged into the board. What I'm gonna be testing is to see if there's power to this redriver chip. So we got one pin over here that has 1.1 volts. That's what it should have. This top pin right here should have 3.3 volts. And it does, 3.289, that should be close enough. So if the, if the voltages were off on this chip, then I would say that it's likely this chip is bad. But unfortunately with the voltages being right where they need to be, I'm not sure that that chip is bad. One thing I can do to confirm this is just remove that chip. So let's get the chip removed and then we'll see if it'll power up after that. Now with that redriver removed and it put back together enough just to test, let's see what happens. And we're getting the exact same thing. Now just for fun, I did plug in the hard drive just to see if that would change anything. Let's see what happens. Oh, we get a white light. So with the hard drive installed, we have a white light. Let's see if it'll stay on. I think you can see that on camera. Oh, and it just turned off. So with the redriver removed, we get the light white light back that we were having before. So I think the fact that we have this white light coming back on when we remove the redriver is enough to just try putting a new redriver on and just see if that happens to fix the issue. Okay, and good as new, or as some might say, better than factory. Okay, power plugged in. Oh, we're back to just the bell with no flashing, with no white light or anything. Well, that's a bummer. And the fan just randomly started spinning. Okay, that's weird. Boy, this is a weird one. I'm gonna start testing voltages on the board and see if we can figure this one out. So now I'm gonna use this thermal camera and just see what heats up when we try to turn it on, if anything. Here we go, we got a white light. 
And we've got 111 degrees under the APU, 112, 113, 114. So I figured out if I leave the Xbox just turned in, turned in. So I figured out if I just leave the Xbox plugged in and leave it for about a minute or so, then it, it will try and turn on like it's been doing. If I disconnect the power cable from the power supply, then it will just beep. So I've got it to where I can reliably get the white light to come on, but then all that happens is it'll just turn on and then a few seconds later turn off. Now every once in a while the fan will just randomly come on and ramp up really fast and I think that's because the APU is working, but for some reason it's not telling the fan to come on, and for some reason it's not sending a signal to the TV, so I'm not totally sure what's going on on this board, but I'm guessing it might be a faulty APU. So let's check our voltages now, make sure we have everything we need. Right down here is a five volt power rail, and we have five volts, and right down here is a 3.3 volt power rail, and we have 3.29, good enough. And then over here we should have 12 volts, and we do. So we know we have all the power we need on the board. We know that it is not the hard drive because we tested it with a known good. We know that it's not the read driver because we removed the old read driver and then we installed a new read driver. The APU is definitely suspect. There's one other thing I wanna try because I know in the comments people are gonna tell me to do this. There is a chip right behind the ethernet port that some people say can fix that, this type of problem. So I'm gonna remove that chip and let's see what happens. And the chip in question is this Realtek chip right here. I've checked all around for shorts and I haven't found any shorts so I don't think this is gonna work, but it's easy to remove. So let's just do it and see what happens. And with that Realtek chip removed, let's see what happens. We get a white light. The hard drive's definitely spinning, no fan spin, and turns off. So at this point, I have to say, I think it's probably the APU. So unfortunately, this motherboard I think is done for, but I have an idea. I would really hate to see this Taco Bell special edition not work. The chime must live on. So what I want to try and do is see if I can place that speaker and circuitry onto another known good Xbox One X motherboard, and then I can put this hard drive into that same Xbox One X, and hopefully we can save the chime. So this is the speaker and circuitry for the Taco Bell Special Edition Xbox One X, and this is what it looks like on just a regular Xbox One X. So I'm hoping that I can place all these components and speaker onto a known good board and then it will work. I don't know if this will actually work, but I really wanna save this Taco Bell Special Edition Xbox, so I think it's worth a try. The first thing I'm gonna do is see if I can remove this speaker cleanly. That's the part that I'm the most worried about. There are four pads that it is soldered onto the board with, so what I'm gonna do is heat it from the top side and see if I can get that to loosen and remove it. If I can get the speaker off, then that's gonna be the hardest part. All of this stuff will be fairly easy to replace using my hot air soldering station. So let's start heating from the other side of the board and see if we can get that speaker off without melting anything. All of this around it here is plastic and obviously there's plastic on the inside along with a coil of wire. You can see when I push down, it moves. This is gonna be super difficult to remove and still keep it intact. If I mess this up and get it too hot and any of the speaker melts, then we're pretty much done for. So here is the speaker. I'm gonna heat from this side and hopefully be able to pull this part off without doing any damage. I've never done this type of trying to get this thing off. I'm so worried about that plastic, but it'll make a more dramatic video, I guess, if I do melt the plastic. <laughs> Well, the good news is I did get the speaker off. The bad news is this pad just stayed on the board. Actually, these three pads did, and this pad ripped up the part of the board that it was attached to. These two pads aren't too big of a deal. Those are just mounting pins. This pad is a bigger deal because this is where the positive terminal goes. Let's look at the speaker and see what that looks like. So the good news is that this membrane right here seems to be intact. The bad news is that the speaker just totally delaminated from this bottom piece, which isn't too big of a deal. The main problem I see is that the wires that were attached to the speaker are not attached anymore. 
or to these pads. It's attached to the speaker, not attached to the pads. So what we need to try and do is get this thing back on here where it goes and then try and reattach these two wires. And then I think we'll be able to use this speaker still. So let's see if we can get those wires soldered on correctly. I know these components need to be put onto the new board, but also this chip on the other side of the board also needs to be placed onto the new board. These two traces right here, one is a positive and one is a negative, and that's what gives power to the speaker. Now, I don't know if this chip is the only thing that makes that speaker work, but I do know for sure that we need to place this on there. So let's get our new board out and start placing components. Now with this chip soldered on, all that's left to do is finish cleaning up the board and then it'll be time to see if it works. I guess before we do that, we should probably solder the speaker back on. That's, you know, semi-important too. So instead of soldering this on, I think what I'm gonna do is actually use double-sided tape and tape it on. I'm afraid if I try and solder it on, I'm gonna end up melting too many parts of it. And we know that we've got a plus pin right here and a minus pin right here. So all we need to do is bring a wire from here to here and a wire from there to there. So I'm gonna use some very strong double-sided adhesive, stick this speaker to the board, and then we'll do the soldering. Okay, that's definitely not going anywhere. That's good and strong. So now we need to bring a wire from this pad right here over to this pad right here, and one from here over to here. Okay, and there we go, we got all the wires connected. And then we can test it and see if after all that work, it's gonna work. Now, since this is a different board, we do need to install the perfect amount of thermal paste. And there we go. And now with the perfect amount of thermal paste installed, we can get to the reassembly. Okay, and now we have it fixed, I hope. We have it cleaned. Let's see if it makes the noise when we turn it on. Come on. Yeah. Okay, it makes the noise. Do we get anything on the screen though? Good. And there we go. Thank you again to iFixit for sponsoring this video. If you need tools, if you need parts, or if you need even supplies like the tape that I used to secure that speaker, you can find all that on ifixit.com slash tronicsfix. I'll put a link right in the description that'll take you right there. If you wanna see another video where I try to fix a different special edition Xbox One X, I'll put that link right on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix that one. This Xbox One X is gonna be for sale on eBay by the time this video goes live, so if you wanna check it out and place a bid, I'll have a link in the description so you can do that. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.